Hey folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, we are looking at 10 more of the most visually unique games out there. Number 10, it's kind of three games, but they all have a brand, a theme, etc. Hitman Go, Lara Croft Go, and Deus Ex Go. These games take the style of their game and transform it into a consistent style to the Go series. It's minimalist and feels very appropriate for mobile gaming, but at the same time retains elements from the game that it's drawn inspiration from. Like if you want to find something between Hitman, Deus Ex, or Tomb Raider, and Monument Valley, or Crossy Road, the Go series pretty much nails it. And it's really actually quite amazing if you think about it, because these various series deal in a more photorealistic look, and it seems not weird. Number 9, Team Fortress 2, which is a game that sort of brought the idea of the hero-based shooter to life. Certainly, it's probably not the first, but it definitely did a lot to popularize the huge differences between characters, and it did that visually. From the heavy, to the pyro, to the medic, everything has a very unique look, and there's no mistaking one character for another, despite similar color configurations, which is really great when you're trying not to kill your own team. It's also significant to talk about how at the time it was a very, very strange looking game when everyone was trying to do photorealism and it sort of went for a cartoony, distinct look in the shooter genre of all genres. Number 8, Earthworm Jim, which was a game that came kind of out of nowhere with the intention of creating like a toy franchise that ended up being an actually good game. On top of that, it ended up being one of the most visually distinct games of the era, having totally hand-drawn animation that was incredibly fluid, especially when considering it was from the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis era. The game's propensity for bizarre characters necessitated a lot of bizarre character designs, and this was in an era where Mario and Sonic kind of dominated platforming. Earthworm Jim sort of created a different genre of platformer that opened the doors for a lot of other sort of less mainstream looking titles. And one could say that games that are produced that look like that owe a lot to Earthworm Jim. None of them quite recreate that type of magic that this game created. Number seven appropriately is Killer7. Killer7 is a game that can be called a lot of different things, but the most easily noticeable is how different the graphics are from pretty much everything else. Killer7 embraced all the limitations of the time and built a look that one could even say a lot of very popular games draw inspiration from. I've talked about Mirror's Edge in the previous video in this series, and I think that it owes at least something to Killer7. The other thing that I particularly like about this game is that for a lot of it, the angle is totally fixed as you make choices on what you're doing. It sort of emphasizes the visual distinction and also makes the first person segments of the game feel a lot more frantic. Number six is Zeno Clash, which is a game that manages to become instantly understandable in what it's going for simply by its color palette. It's a dark palette, in some cases it's a dingy palette, but it's also a palette that incorporates very, very colorful elements into it to sort of talk to you in a certain language. You understand a lot more about this game simply by the color palette that they're using in the area. They also manage to make just about everywhere look oddly threatening, again specifically through the use of color. The game didn't even vaguely worry about being realistic, instead relying on sort of a muted neon to say, look at what we're doing here, it's definitely different. Number five, Journey, which has the distinction of being a game where most of the fan art is done in the exact same style of art that the game is. There are very few games where you see that, and even when people go for a more complex version of it, they still sort of keep it in the same style, maybe adding their own little flourishes. And the reason for this is that it is such a unique and different approach to literally everything about a game. At times it feels very minimalist, but at times there's a lot of detail. It really depends on where you are and what you're doing, but always feels coherent. Lighting, color, scale, and animation are all on just the absolute top level they possibly could be in this game. This is a game that if there weren't gameplay elements, I could easily say is the best looking animated film out there. Fortunately, there's also a great game associated with it. Number four is Ico and Shadow of the Colossus because they're both very, very similar visually and they're from the same developer. But these games put forward a totally different take on the idea of sort of a serene darkness. 
There's something both calming and unsettling about the art style in both of these games. The color palette is fairly limited in these games, and the artistic style sort of reflects that as well. There's a lot of monolithic stuff in both of these games, and they have the appearance of decay. There's a calming element in the way that nature has taken everything over, but at the same time an inherent sadness projected in that decay. And at the same time, you never really know when something very dangerous is about to happen. It's several conflicting feelings wrapped up into a single art style, and I think that that's such a brilliant execution on their part. Number three, Borderlands. I've talked about it before, but there's something about Borderlands that is just absolutely, well, you know it's Borderlands. It looks like a comic book in a lot of respects, but in others, it reminds me of sort of post-punk urban decay imagery as well. Taken to an extreme, of course, being that nothing is really, you know, intact anymore. Borderlands manages to embrace a sort of less detailed style in a manner that I'm sure is beneficial for how the game runs, but is more beneficial visually in that emphasis is so much easier to create within the confines of the borderline style than it would be if this game were hyper-realistic. Number two is Half-Life 2, which managed to be something completely different. There's nothing astoundingly, like, extreme about its art style in any way. It just takes this gritty approach to sci-fi that really video games hadn't been doing very much of. When something was sci-fi, it was sci-fi, chrome-plated, microchips, and some of that other stuff. And when something was gritty, it was sort of this more alternative type game. We have like a grim plot of some sort, whereas Half-Life 2 kind of isn't the first to try it, but it married grit and sci-fi in a way that I don't I, I can tell it's Half-Life 2 when I see screenshots. And not because I recognize every single place, but because it's unmistakable. They nail not only the feel of sort of a post-war, post-invasion type decay, but there's also just a hint of the understanding that places didn't look good before that stuff showed up. Like, if you travel America right now, you'll find a lot of stuff that looks very much like it could come out of Half-Life without an invasion ever having happened. And I feel like that's kind of its strength. It understands the natural and the unnatural deterioration of the setting it takes place in. And finally, number one is Grim Fandango, which I have trouble even saying without simply describing it as itself. Grim Fandango is Grim Fandango. It takes its visual inspiration from more Mexican-styled art, but isn't just a total rip-off of it. Combining it with film noir, the result is such a totally different style of art that is so ubiquitous to the game itself, nobody even tried to rip it off. You can glean so much from the design philosophy of Grim Fandango that if you actually follow what they tried to do, not necessarily Mexican art in a noir setting, but rather not necessarily taking a popular framework and filling it with a very uncommon style of art. I think more people should maybe think about that when they go into designing a game, because the result was just so aesthetically pleasing, as well as just some big breath of fresh air that I think a lot of people wanted at the time. What are some incredibly visually distinct games that you enjoy? Let's talk about that in the comments. If you enjoyed this video please click the like button and if you're not subscribed now is a great time to do just that we upload brand new videos every single day of the week the best way to see them first is is a subscription as always we thank you so much for watching this video i'm falcon you can follow me on twitter at falcon the hero and we'll see you next time right here on game ranks